about this video because it's a little bit different for me. We're going to make a hat today. We are going to make a felted hat. Now, this is a confession. <laughs> I um, have always sort of had this dream that I would like to be a forest gnome. I would like to live in the forest and gather mushrooms and acorns and live under the root of a big tree and frolic in the leaves. <laughs> so today, I am going to live my forest gnome dreams and make myself a fantasy sort of forest gnome hat. I need a little coffee to gather my strength. I don't know why I'm so nervous for this project, but I am. So I think the best thing to do to get over that <laughs> initial, is this gonna turn out? I, I think we should just get started. So here are the materials that I will be using for this project. And a little coffee to give me fortitude. The wool that I'm using for this project, mostly I got from Paradise Fibers. They sent it to me in the monthly subscription boxes. But you don't have to have a subscription box to get this wool. It is available from a couple sources. So I will put all the links to the different items that I'm using here in the description of the video below. You can check that out if you want to try this yourself. Or go stash diving. This is a great way to use up some wool that maybe you don't want to spin, but you want to put into a project great way to use it up. So I am starting with this pumpkin spice. It is a combed top, kind of a tweed blend. It has some little viscose bits in there. So there are like little black speckles, which is pretty cool. And then I also have this combed Corydale. It is so pretty. I think what I'm going to do is make this the outside body of the hat and this is going to be the inside lining of the hat which you will see under the brim if you get a look under the brim it's gonna have this like very vibrant kind of green stuff going on but then this is gonna be the main outer body part of the hat that's my idea I hope it works what else do we have here and then have this basket which is full of not peppermint bark it's almost as disappointing as those Danish cookie tins it's not peppermint bark it is um, needle felting supplies all of the the needles and stuff this is big I should put this down I feel awkward okay yeah, so I've got this whole basket full of needle felting supplies. So after I get the hat made and felted into its shape, I want to put decorations on it. I was sort of thinking with like the purple and the orange and the green underneath, like that it might be too much. But then I was like, whoever said a hat was too much? Can a hat be too much? I thought the point of a hat was to be too much. So I'm just gonna let my imagination roam wild in the forest and whatever it looks like I might have foraged to return with, I'm gonna make like a, I don't know if it'll be on the side, maybe the back, I don't know. I'm gonna make what looks like a foraged forest bouquet of things. Some leaves, some acorns maybe, toadstools, I don't know, but it's gonna, it's gonna be the embellishment of the hat. Is it too much? I don't know. Regardless of how those decorations turn out, I can always make them, put them on, and see how it looks at the end. So I guess we'll have to get to that point when we get to it. First off though, we do have to make the actual hat itself. This will be the main body, this will be the underside, so let's felt a hat. Now we're going to make the actual hat form that were oh good my head is still the same size as it was the last time I measured my head <laughs> we're gonna make the form larger than my head because when you felt everything shrinks down and gets smaller if we start out making it exactly the size of my head and then we felt it it's gonna come out like a child size so make it bigger couple inches maybe. Alright so I'm gonna take the measurement of my head and I'm gonna take it in half 
and then I'm going to give it maybe an extra three inches to allow it to shrink down. It's a little guesstimation. At the end, when we shape the hat, we can kind of stretch it out a little bit and we'll be checking it along the way to make sure it doesn't go too small. So that should be enough. Now we're going half because I'm making a flat form to put the hat around using this. So let me clear my table here and then I will draw out my hat form. All right, I have my measuring tape, my EVA foam, my marker, which is a black Sharpie, but it'll show up enough that I can cut this. And then I have my other hat just to kind of check how the brim is looking. If you're doing this yourself, you might want to make a paper mock-up, mock-up. If you're, if you're doing this yourself, you might want to make a paper mock-up, but I'm going to live dangerously. <laughs> or foolishly, I don't know, I guess we'll find out. So yeah, we are going to have very much of a circle here. So, so at my widest point, I want it to be about like this. I want the top of the hat to be kind of like a cloche and Gandalf's hat had a hat baby that lived in the forest. But I, I don't want it to be fully symmetrical. We're gonna lean to the side a little and we're gonna give it a nice point. Okay, <laughs> I, I drew the hat and then I thought that's not very dramatic. Plus it's gonna shrink and it made me concerned. So then I redrew it again bigger and I guess I'll just have to felt it hard enough that it shrinks down, I think. Um, and I'm not quite entirely sure about the top here. I sort of wanted it to be a little bit more, I don't know, like it could fold over or kind of curl, like maybe a curly cute, I don't know. You know, um, maybe, maybe, maybe I'll just go with it for this one. Maybe this one, I'll, I'll just go with it. Be like whoa is this is this too big well I want to have a little brim happening is it I don't know well and then I'm gonna I'm gonna scooch this I'm gonna scooch that part I'm gonna, I'm going to scooch it I have a plan okay I hope it works, but I do sort of have an idea in my head of, of how I've done this. This has, okay, we're, we're gonna go with it. I don't know, it might be too big. I have this permanent marker line on here, but it seems to have mostly soaked in. If it gets on this fiber, I'm not worried about it because there's black in there already, but maybe just something to be aware of. I especially want this to show up around the brim, around the bottom of the hat. And so I'm going to make sure that this gets really good and layered here so that it shows up. If I don't have enough to make it all the way to the top, then I can put something else up there. It's not gonna be seen because it'll be on the inside. So to make sure I have enough of this for both sides of the hat, I'm going to just split it in half and I will use this half for this side and then when I flip it over, I'll bring out this to do the other side. Just pull pieces off, open them up and lay them out over my hat. Okay, I had a feeling it wasn't gonna take us quite to the top and we do need to have that finished. So 
I'm just going to grab some other just plain wool. August Paradise Fibers, well, it's just wool. It, it doesn't really matter. This part won't be seen. I just need it to make the layer complete. This is where the tool comes in. So I will lay this over the whole thing and make sure, hmm, we might not be wet enough to hold it together. The first time you're getting it wet, you, um, you have to get it really wet because wool absorbs all that water. There we go. Now it's starting to kind of stick to itself with moisture. It's holding in together. To flip it over, I'm going to kind of roll it up like so. Slide it very cautiously. And... Yay! It's holding! It held together. <laughs> so we can flip it over. Yay! Alright, that was good. Open up that tool. Now we want to have it over the edge, so we're going to kind of peel that around the edge. Okay, we finished the second side and now it's time to flip it back over. Ha ha, we did it! All right, we have both layers of the inside layer and then the outside layer uh, stacked on each other on both sides of the hat. So now what I need to do is start felting. And the easiest way to do that is with a pool noodle. <laughs> so I put the tool on both sides of the hat. Um, at a point, I'm going to take the tool off. The tool is just there to keep all of it together so it doesn't, you know, kind of have flyaways and start falling apart before it really starts to lock in on each other. So I'll give it a little agitation with the pool noodle, get it going, and then after it starts to really start to get meshed into an actual fabric, then I'll take the tool off because I don't want the tool to get really stuck on there and then when you pull it off, it kind of makes fuzz. All right, so let's just start rolling that pool noodle all over this hat. I flipped that around. I added more hot water and a little more soap. So hopefully that'll get us there a little quicker, but this whole process is just like, work in your arms. <laughs> so I have it all laid out and I'm just going at it with the pool noodles. Any way that you can to switch it up and give it agitation is what it's going to take. So we'll just keep agitating it, getting our aggressions out, working it out on the hat. Okay, friends. Oh, oh dear. It's water. <laughs> um, I want to be clear about the expectations on this project because 
as we know, this is a YouTube video, and what do we do with videos? We edit them! And so you have not seen the past two hours where I have on and off been rolling this, and I put it on the floor, and I stomped on it with my feet, and I took it outside, and I put extra soap on it, and I got it hot and then cold, and all the things that you do to make wool, wool felt. So I've been busy, and you didn't see that part. Just know it does take a lot of work. And unless you're using super wash or something that won't felt, uh, even wool that does felt takes time to felt. So if you do this project, please know I edited that out because no one wants to see all that. It was very boring. All right, I am ready to cut open this hat and we're gonna flip it inside out and continue felting it because we're not done. Once we get to this point where if you pull on it, it isn't individual locks anymore, it's coming up as a solid piece. Once we get to that point, then we are ready to cut it and we're gonna flip it inside out and continue working it from the from the underside, from the inside. And I'm going to be careful not to cut the form on the inside because I'll save it. If I like it, I can use it again. Is this where I want it? I guess that's where I want it. So I want to bring it up to about the same spot. All right, so there is the inside of this hat and that is looking fantastic. Oh my gosh, this is incredible. And we can see that the, f the form on this side, I don't know if you can see because it's black, but it's curled up like this. And the reason for that is because this is felting down and uh, there's less room for the form to fit. <gasps> Look at that! Look how cool. This is very cool. But there it is. Oh, this felted up nicely. This is, whatever this white stuff was, that felted really well. This is good too. All right, so we are going to keep at it. I'm gonna head to the sink and work on this some more and I'm just gonna keep doing what I'm doing. Kneading it like bread, shocking it with hot cold water, keeping it full of hot soapy water, um, throwing it around a little bit. Uh, if you don't want the water to splatter everywhere, the bathtub's a good place to do that as well. So, yep, just keep working it and working it. All right, here it is, the hat. I'm nervous, why am I so nervous? If you see me looking over that way, it's because I'm using the, the view as a camera, as a mirror. The camera as a mirror. Oh my goodness, I'm giddy. <laughs> Why am I such a goof? Okay, let's try it on. Ready? But it's, it's, I'm a gnome. Look at me, I'm a forest gnome. <laughs> friends. I made a forest gnome hat. Look at this. Look at this hat. Is it even all on the camera? Look at this hat. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm a forest gnome. <laughs> oh wow. Okay. If we try it the other way. <sighs> yeah, I need to trim this. That's the cool thing about felt though. Like once it's done, now you can cut it and trim it and do what you need to. But I like how it has the green underneath. And if we roll this up, this is like, look at my wings. I feel like, what's that dinosaur on Jurassic Park? The one that spits and it goes. <laughs> now I'm a forest gnome dinosaur. <laughs> okay, I think it's time to felt some leaves because I want, you know how you would have like a flower on a hat? You'd roll up the brim and then 
pin a flower on it. I want it like that, but for us know me fantasy stuff. It's not fantasy though. This is my reality. I have a forest gnome hat. And my reality is that I'm gonna go run around in the woods and wear this hat and live my best forest gnome life. That's what I'm, yeah. Okay. I went online and found a picture of an oak leaf and I just drew the outline of it onto a piece of brown felt. I just drew it with a Sharpie. It doesn't look great, but somehow when I cut it out, it looks fine. And then on the other side of that, I am needle felting some wool. When I have the wool felted onto the felt backing, I cut out the leaf. And that's basically it. This wool has some really beautiful color changes, and so I'm just pulling out the color changes to be the leaf and it looks fantastic. Just getting it all cleaned up and here's what it's looking like. Pretty good. Check these out, because they're so cute. So I have some little needle felted acorns here. Do I need another acorn? I think one more acorn. 